All right. So what's going on, guys? Dr. Matt here, host of the Roadie Strength Podcast. We have another special guest on today, Maria Andresino. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Doing good. So we are here at the Mind to Body Fitness Pilates Studio, which you just ran me through a couple really cool Pilates exercises. I some stuff I've never done before. Yeah, what you uh, think? It was awesome. Yeah, it, um, it's cool. And we'll definitely dive into this a little more. But the way that the exercises are and the way the equipment is, is it's opposite of what you think there's a lot of like gym style with the spring, the resistance. Like you've been saying, like more springs, more resistance sometimes isn't harder it's easier so yeah we'll, we'll get into that but yeah really cool thank you for bringing me through that and kind of opening my eyes to like yeah. the Pilates world so glad you came yeah absolutely. so glad you got to try it out uh so we'll get for the podcast we'll do a quick intro um we'll get into the rapid fire questions a little bit and then we're going to dive deep into the uh the Pilates world so uh i just want to give you a brief intro so you're uh owner and trainer here at um mind body fitness you've been training for over 30 years and have quite a few different certifications yeah. <laughs> and, and quite a few and even just from walking in here seeing like some of the pictures on the wall um joe pilates uh and and uh like some of the old school like pilates stuff like you can tell you're a student of the game too yeah, which is cool yeah yeah um, i actually started in personal training so okay yeah um so pilates is my you know <laughs> my love but personal training so also yeah. so we are actually a pilates and personal training studio very cool so we do have some personal training clients oh awesome that's a good mix Cool. All right. So we'll uh, just for intro, we'll get into the rapid fire questions. So I like to start off with, I love coffee, so I always start off with this one. Favorite coffee shop in the area? Definitely uh, New Harvest Coffee. Nice. That's a good choice. It used to be Seven Stars because they used to serve New Harvest Coffee. Oh yeah, I but remember now that. They, they switched it over, so now I go to New Harvest. But good and call. I just went recently, and they were like, you know, you have like two hundred points here, <laughs> so I haven't paid at New Harvest in ages. Nice. Back in the day, we used to. I used to work at a Pilates studio in um, in the uh, I forget the name of the mill. But that's where New Harvest used to be the roastery. Yes, I know what you're talking about, yeah. right? In the Providence Pawtucket line yeah. over there? Yes. And yep. so I think that's where I got all my points. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Uh, next question, we got favorite go-to breakfast. Now, this could be going out to eat somewhere or something you like to make yourself. Well, there's sort of two things here. <laughs> I eat the same. I'm one of those people. Okay. I eat the same thing every morning. Oatmeal and berries, 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 berries. Tons nice. of berries. I love the berries because I, I work a lot on that non-inflammation stuff because I have a, totally. lot of, a lot of joint inflammation. So Totally. Um, but I'm like oatmeal every morning because I work you know pretty long hours and the oatmeal just for some reason I feel like fills me up and I'm not hungry until you know, I you eat up. lunch like really late. Sure, yeah. yeah. Oh, that works but good. I'm definitely on the weekends, I'm a brunch girl. Nice. I love my brunch. Do you so. go anywhere in particular? Have you been to Bayberry Gardens? Um, I've been to the Bayberry on the west side, but I haven't been to the gar the, the gardens. Bayberry is Gardens, yeah, it's the gardens is like a beer hall. I oh. don't actually know where the beer hall is in relationship to the restaurant, but the restaurant it's a little pricey. It's pretty, yeah, yeah. it's a little fancy farm to table kind of thing. But it's near that new walking bridge, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, I haven't the base been to that bridge. one yet. But really been to that good one. Yeah. stuff. So yeah, <laughs> very cool. All right. Uh, next question we got is favorite recent book. All right, so this one kind of puts me to shame because I wish I could actually read books. Sure, sure. Um, but I don't know, like, maybe you're like this. I don't, I read so much trade journals yes. and stuff that I hardly, I haven't read an actual book cover to cover in sure. years. Sure. Um, but I did recently pick up this, there's this great Pilates book called Cage Lion. And I was telling you this story. So this guy um, was John Howard Steele. This mm -hmm. just came out recently. Cool. Um, and he was one of Joe Pilates' um, clients. Okay. Now, most of them, because Joe died in the 80s, mm -hmm. um, and not in the 80s, I think he died in the 60s, in his 80s. Sure. Um, but he, um, John Steele was his lawyer. Okay. And John started when he was a young guy with Joseph Pilates. And so he wrote this um, book about, there's a lot of sort of legacy and a lot of legend and lore around Joe Pilates mm. because there are very few people. There's like four people left who actually worked with him and knew him. Uh, and they're all in their 80s. And frankly, a lot of them have gone a little, <laughs> a little woohoo. Yeah, sure. But um, so John Steele wrote this book and it's kind of, it's very campy. It's kind of funny. Oh, cool. Uh, some of the stuff that he says in here has been challenged. People are saying, no, it didn't happen that way. But, sure, sure. you know, it's a fun read anyway. Yeah. And the cool thing about it, you were talking about my pictures on the wall. Yeah. So that's his dad in one of those photos over there. See the guy in the big handstand on the ladder barrel. 
No That's way. John's dad. And so I was at a conference, and I was purchasing that photo from the um, photographer, yeah. I.C. Rappaport, who um, is also a great guy. He's still alive. Um, he took all these photos of Joe. And... And I was standing next to John Steele, and I and he goes, "Yeah, that's my dad." And I said, "John, you got to sign my poster." And it says oh, at the bottom, "That's my dad, John Steele." That's awesome. So that's going to be worth a lot of money when you know. Yeah, because yeah. he's also in his eighties. Gotcha. Kind of kooky guy, but anyway, so that was a pretty good book. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is that another one you had read recently? Well, this is just Joe's book, which oh, you gotcha. know, when we talk about Joe, I can I'll just read you a line or two from Joe's book. <laughs> Love cause, it. Because talk about a kook. Um, so again, not everybody is a podcast listener, but do you have a, do you have a favorite recent podcast that you like, or are, are you a podcast listener? I am not much of a podcast no? listener yeah. because, uh, my, my commute is really short. Sure. Now that's, it is. That's I used to key. drive a lot longer, but now yeah. it's really short, so I don't listen. But my husband is totally into my favorite murder. Okay. Have you heard those? You know what? It's, it's a very common theme. Even though this is a fitness-based podcast, people <laughs> love the murder mysteries and the crime podcast. Yeah. I think they're just fun, they're fun in general. Well, so <laughs> actually, when I listen to those, what I like about them is the two chicks that do it. Okay. Are, they're hilarious. Yeah. They're trash mouth. <laughs> and mostly what they do is just get on and like babble and sure. talk about their day and just really weird <laughs> stuff. And then they get into the... Sure. That's when I stop listening, when they get into the crime part. You're saying, I just want to hear murder babble. Part. I'm <laughs> like, I like this. The girls are, are really fun to listen to. So. That's cool. I like that. That's a good answer. Uh, next one we got... And, and the way I um, portray this question is... So favorite Instagram accounts. This could be something that um, you really like as far as like educational, like in the Pilates or fitness industry, or maybe something that's just you find entertaining and funny and, and cool. Yeah, yeah. Lately, I've been super into these mobility. Okay, yeah. Um, there's a girl, Little Little T Fit, I think her name is. She's okay. um, she's competing in Miss Something. Um, okay. You know, but she's um, she does this crazy mobility things where she's like on her hands drops to her elbows and I love to watch her and she comes she pops cool. up on my feet a lot that's cool um, and there's a guy called Leo Moves okay and he's you know I mostly like him because he has his shirt off most of the time <laughs> and he's man bun and everything but he does this all this crazy stuff and the both of them I think have gotten pretty well known and now sure. are selling video on demand things sure, and take sure. my workshops and stuff yeah so, yeah um but there I, all this mobility stuff i really like to watch just, that is fascinating that is one of the like the bright sides of social media you can like really dive into that, some of that stuff which is cool yeah um next question we got uh somewhere you've traveled recently this could be work related personally related i've been nowhere um <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a big fan of hawaii hawaii nice. is one of my favorite places in the nice. world so haven't been there yet but i want to the go. last trip i took was probably there Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, next one, we got favorite shoe or sneaker. And same thing. This could be fitness related or just personal. I'm a Nike. All I'm right. I'm a Nike person because cool. I need the arch support. Yeah. I've yep. got those dancer's feet, so I have that really high arch. High arch, and yep. I pronate all over the place. So I've tried other shoes. I just go to my Nikes. Nice. That's and I wear the good old-fashioned, like, Nike Air from the aerobics days. There you go. Yeah. Those I are like still those. popular. That's a good choice. Uh, next question is, I think an obvious one, but still, <laughs> I'll still ask it. Uh, what are you liking uh, for fitness, like for your own workouts right now? Well, you know, this is now. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna tell all my clients who are listening to cover your ears oh. <laughs> because I don't actually do as much Pilates as sure other things. I am a gym rat. I sure, love yeah. the gym. Totally. I love the big equipment. I love to go in the gym where nobody knows me. <laughs> um, I love the big like. Box gyms like LA Fitness. And, yeah, um, yeah. You know, and um, that's cool. So I, those are my favorite workouts. I love to push weight. Yeah, yeah. I think because I teach yep. so much, like I get down on the machines and I've just spent, you know, so much time on six, it. eight hours teaching the same routine. I'm like, ah, I don't want to yeah, do it. Yeah. So, but that being said, I could drop down on one of these pieces of equipment and drop out an advanced workout, like, you know, <laughs> like nothing. nothing. So, um, so I do do I do a fair amount of Pilates, but yeah. the other thing that I'm super hot on, and we're staring at it right now, is I just bought a power plate. Yes. Yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, so the power plate is this vibration technology. Mm -hmm. um, it was invented by NASA okay. for astronauts that were coming back from space sure, yeah. with bone loss. Sure. Because there's no gravity, you lose bone. Right. And so right. NASA developed this technology. It It's not so much like it doesn't shake, it yeah. oscillates. It oscillates at like 35 megahertz or 45 megahertz or something. Okay. And it literally like goes into your bone. 
<laughs> and the research, because it's NASA, the research yeah. that they've done, and then PowerPlate, the company is is really into research. Yeah, it grows. The one of the studies said four percent bone growth. Wow. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. So, um, and what it does is, so you're on, you're standing on it, and it vibrates your muscles so fast that your muscles contract at this mm. ridiculous rate. So you just stand on it and do like five squats. Yeah. It's like doing 50 squats. Gotcha. So yeah. I literally do 10 minutes on it and I just stand <laughs> on it and I like hobble down the stairs and you can sit on it. It's crazy on the abs. We should play with it later. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> now you, yeah. yeah. Now you're, um, but I bought it mostly for myself because I, yeah. I have some bone loss. Um, sure. Sure. So um, I was. So I can't wait till my next EXA scan to nice. see. Nice. To Very see if cool. there's been growth. So and you yeah, need literally updated. like 10, 15 minutes on it four times a week. That's it. Yeah, that's not bad. So at I all. just stand on it sometimes and you know check my phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so just get the vibration. Yeah. So if anybody <laughs> wants to try the power plate, come here and check it out. It's Definitely, great. it's a great tool. Very cool. Uh, last last rapid fire we got is favorite current pump up or gym song <laughs> so this so, is funny so i play um in the studio i like when i work out or when i teach mm -hmm. um just kind of chill ambient sure. music yeah yeah um one of my staff calls it porno music <laughs> she's like oh maria's got her porno <laughs> music on you know so no um no lyrics sure just like, yeah just so vibes. that's what i play a lot but then when i go to the gym and do my own workouts i'm like dance nice nice dance stuff <laughs> so. i love it that's good and any current song right now that you can think of it's, it's popping up. Maybe do a guilty Lipa. pressure. Do, do a Lipa. Lipa. Nice. Up, you know? I like that. I hate that it's the Barbie song, but you know. I can't even think of which song that is. But I was grooving to it before Barbie, so. <laughs> I, oh, oh, okay. Oh, it, it's in the Barbie movie. <laughs> it's I gotcha. in the Barbie movie, yeah. Um, great, great answer. All right, so let's get into your background a little bit. So the, the first question I have for you is how you got into Pilates. Yeah, so this is a kind of a cool story, too. I was a corporate in, and I'm, I've been in this business a long time. So I was in the 90s. Um, I was in a corporate job. Sure. And I was teaching um, computers to people. And mm -hmm. this was like pre-internet. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, And I was really like, I was kind of overweight. And I was, you know, I was in corporate. Yeah. So, uh, but I was going to the gym. And I would do workouts and um, mostly cardio stuff and some kickboxing stuff. And i mm -hmm. um, I'm one of those people that immediately when I do something, I want to teach it. Sure, sure. So I started teaching aerobics. Nice, yeah. My company went under. Um, actually, we got bought and we closed up. And sure. So uh, a couple of weeks later, I was in Hawaii doing a training program cool. that was called Strong, Stretched, and Centered. Okay. And it was like everything. It was Tai Chi. It was yoga. It was weightlifting. It was, um, so there's a little bit of Pilates. It was a huge like, an amount of anatomy. There was like all these psychology therapy sessions. Nice. And it was 25 people living in a condo all together. And That's cool. So it was a great program. So I spent two months in Hawaii. That's cool. And I was like, ah, I'm just going to go. Like when I went, I said it's fitness camp. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I'll just do that for a little while, and then I'll go get a real job, you know. And then I got back to San Francisco. This I was living there at the time. Yeah. And I started training, and I was like, wait a minute. This is a real job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and this is a job that I'm in love with. Sure. Like, it doesn't feel like a job. Sure, do yeah. You, do you feel like that? Yes, like, yes. You go to work, it's not, you know, it yeah. doesn't feel like a job. Right. So I'm like, I finally found one, you know. <laughs> um, so that was many years ago. And then I, I started getting into Pilates mostly because it was, it was getting hot at the time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so back then I was doing like TRX when TRX first came out. Yeah. Uh, I was one of the first people to use the TRX. That's cool. And the BOSU, you know, yeah. I used to do BOSU training and stuff before it even, in fact, I went to TRX when they started a training program and I said, you know, Hey, I'm certified. And they were like, we don't have any record of you ever certifying. I'm like, of no course you wouldn't. Way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't. So, right. <laughs> um, that's so funny. But so I started doing Pilates and then I worked um, at other, a bunch of studios. And then when I got to Rhode Island, I, I got married, by the way, congratulations oh, thank on you. your recent nuptials. Thank you. Um, I got married and moved here and, and I was like, well, hey, let's, you know, why don't I open a studio in Providence? And I found this amazing space, this two story old loft the, the space. The space we're in now? Yeah, the space Very we're in now. Cool. So we've been in this space going on 12 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So, <laughs> um, but I started Mind to Body Fitness back in um, 
back in New York even. Wow. Um, but uh, so, so, and then I've been teaching ever since, but I, I, it's been interesting trying to be a studio owner and a teacher at the same time. Sure, yeah. Um, and now recently my new thing is it's been hard to find staff Sure. Yeah. So now I'm running a teacher training program. So I'm going to grow go. my own. Yeah. <laughs> so we go. just actually this weekend had our first um, anatomy of movement workshop. It was so cool. For three days with anatomy and it was great. It really went well. That's and, so fun. You know, I got to teach my favorite thing. Yeah. Anatomy is my is my jam. That's awesome. So what what was it like? How did you end up going from... Um, uh, so you said you started my my uh, as a fitness in when you're in, in New, New York, York. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How did you end up coming to to start that? That was yeah because I. That's funny that I had the name Mind to Body Fitness yeah. before I even went. Um, that was when I was teaching some um, just doing some aerobic stuff. Sure, okay. In New York yeah. City. Um, cool. Oh no, it wasn't. I went to New York after San Francisco. That's what oh, okay. happened. Yeah. Okay. So I came back from Hawaii. I was in San Francisco. Yep. Went from San Francisco because the weather was sucked and I went, to, <laughs> I went to New York City and that's where I started um so mind to body fitness got started in San Francisco and then I, I kept the name in New York gotcha um Very and cool. then went from New York I met my husband and moved here gotcha um, but I actually went to high school here in Rhode Island oh, okay. and I left and I said oh, I'm never coming back here no. <laughs> it drew you back I like, in I'll never come back but I but I did I um, feel like I hear that a decent amount where people are like, ah, oh, I want to get out of Rhode Island, and they end up coming back. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same, though. It's not. No. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. it's changed a lot. And it's a cool, it's a pretty cool city now. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I fought it. I was like, I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm not going back there. Rhode Island, you know, Providence is not a real city. Yeah. Because I was in New York. But it's um, a cool, it's a cool city. It's, it's a like, totally it's cool easy city. to get everywhere. No, I like yeah. it. And um, we're skipping ahead, but you mentioned it. So I want to talk about it. The, the building we're in. There's there's some history behind the building. It used to be um like a, a mill building. Yeah, it used yeah. to be an old mill. So there's three mills right here. Sure. This one over here is called Rising Sun Mills. Okay. And then this one we're in is called the Plant, and the next one is called Calendar Mills. Gotcha. They cool. were all started as I think they started as um, paper mills. Okay. Yeah. By Mr. Olney, because we're kind of on and the edge of only bill, bill, right? Gotcha. And okay. then I don't think they were paper mills very long. They became textiles. Okay. So um, history is that this, the plant, was the bleaching factory huh. for the textiles that were over at Rising Sun. So, Interesting. Um, but there's some cool posters. I don't know if you saw them on your way in. They uh, found in the a couple of, yeah, they're up on the hallway here, and they I'll found a couple out, signs yeah. that say, um, Doffers must put their bobbins back <laughs> on the table or something. So what does that mean? <laughs> I guess doffers. We looked it up. Yeah, doffers are the so the sewers and okay. bobbins. They use these big giant, you know, sewing machines with these big giant bobbins, yeah. like the size of a dog or whatever. So. Sure, sure. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah, Rhode Island's got some cool history. Yeah. A quick side story: the the gym I'm at in uh, Providence, Rise Strength, right yeah. at my PT office. It was a old. It's also an old mill building. And it was a factory for like creating um, little pieces of metal. Um, the most interesting one is they made a lot of like the police badges. Oh, cool! And like dog tags and stuff like that. So there's still like a box of them, just like in. Yeah, there. I was gonna <laughs> say you found yeah. stuff around. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's, Providence has some cool history. Yeah. Um, let's get into because you you do have a, a lot of different certifications, and I and I wanted to ask you on a couple of them. Um, not all are Pilates related, but I'm still interested. So we can, we can keep this brief if you want to or expand. Yeah, well, they're all well. movement related. All right, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, all the same. So you have a, a PMA CEC provider. Yeah, so PMA is called the Pilates Method Alliance. Gotcha, okay. Um, this is a group that started. So there's when I, when I certified in Pilates, there were four places you could certify. Sure. Now there's like thousands. Uh, sure. <laughs> right. So, and not in that many years. I mean, I certified right. in 2000, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a few years after that, um, the Pilates Method Alliance started and they were like, we're going to be this umbrella organization for all of these different schools. Mm -hmm. And we're going to kind of, you know, build this community and get the word out about Pilates. Cause you know, when sure. I started with doing Pilates, people were like, is it Pilates? <laughs> like how do you spell it? No you know? way. And then Mari Windsor got on TV and did, you know, some videos and then some celebrities started doing it and it became very famous. Gotcha. Of course, Oprah, okay. Madonna, yep. you know, then we got famous. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, Oprah and Madonna. But, um, so that's what a PMA, so CEC provider. So PMA used to have a, um, they have a, a test, 
a certification. Okay. Recently, in the last couple of years, those have pulled out. Mm-hmm. And so now the certification is separate from the Pilates Method Alliance. So now one's an organization, like a group, a uh, okay. um, professional organization. The other one is a certificating, cert- gotcha. certifying organization. Makes sense. Okay, um, cool. But they're the same. So I actually helped years ago write the Whoa. certifying exam. Wow. Yeah. So that's going to be the thing that the that my students will take after they take the 450 hours with me. Right. They're going to go take that exam. So they should get some uh, some of the questions they may oh, yeah, get extra help. It. Yeah, yeah, they're, no, yeah, they're like, kill it. yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna do great. Um, I had a follow up question on that, but I but you answered it already. Is that if you if you do teacher training and yes, you have mm-hmm. you have teacher training going on right now, which is really cool. Um, and you have uh, we can just list them off, but there's a couple I wanted to ask you about. So ten other certifications: spinning, kickboxing, NYC ballet workout, Bosu, aqua, jump rope, kettlebells. So the NYC ballet workout, what is that? Yeah, so this was also many, many years ago. I don't even remember when. Um, New York City Ballet, which is the the actual ballet company, Mm -hmm. decided to put this fitness thing together. Okay. So this was before now ballet bar classes, bar and all that stuff is really hot. Yeah, yeah. But this was a long time ago. This is probably in the 90s, I think. Okay. Where New York City Ballet put this workout together. And it it was like ballet for the fitness people. Sure, yeah. You know, it was a lot of like leg lifts and butt you know, yeah. butt stuff. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and so, but, and they put out a really beautiful publication that had all the beautiful dancers and cool. Um, okay. So that was that. So that was a long time ago. Yeah, cool. I actually didn't finish that, um, because you had to send a video oh. of you teaching to New York city ballet, Peter oh, Martins, man. who is the head of, of New York city ballet. Um, you had to send this video, and I was way too intimidated back then to do it. So I'd be all over it now. <laughs> nice, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, but they, I don't even think that exists anymore. Sure, I, yeah, I hadn't yeah. heard of it f- until yeah. um, I saw it. So that's no, that's cool. Um, aqua, what is aqua? Is that like water? Aqua's like yeah, like water fitness. Water fitness, cool. Um, yeah. And then uh, jump rope, sir. Jump rope was um, <laughs> who is this guy? Uh, I keep thinking Billy Blanks. Um, uh, I have to look him up. I've got his. I've got his. I've got a bunch of VHS tapes okay. that I just <laughs> pulled out of my closet. Um, but it was a guy who did um, jump rope. He yeah. was he was a wrestler. He was an Olympic wrestler. Okay, Buddy Lee. Buddy Lee. Okay, you got to look him up. All right, actually, he's got um, all sorts of stuff online. But Buddy Lee had this certification in jump rope, and it was crazy stuff. Like <laughs> um, now they do it. They call it freestyle. Okay. In fact, something just popped up in my feed about some freestyle jumpers where they were like jumping on their hands and. Oh but man! But Buddy used to do this thing where you, he would sit on the ground with his legs out in front of him, <laughs> and he would jump with his basically with, with the rope his... would go under his ass. <laughs> you know, and he would jump on his ass. No way! <laughs> I've never been able to do yeah. it. But <laughs> you didn't get that from the certification. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But that That's was a cool. fun one, jump rope and kettlebells. I did um, in New York with uh, kettlebells galvanized. I think they're still around. Okay. Yeah. 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 That I was a familiar. real, I'm a kind of, I was a real education and certification junkie for a totally. while. Yeah. I love just going to conferences and going to workouts and going to, it's you know, fun. I yeah. like, I like doing all that stuff. And That's cool. Get a little certificate. And yeah. And get, you're say, super like, well-rounded. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I got a lot. Yeah. I've got a few more after that too. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so you're, <laughs> you're also ACE um, certified, which I know we talked about a little bit yeah. earlier. So um, in the studio here, you do some, or mix of Pilates and personal training mm-hmm. um, with clients, which is cool. Um, and uh, you were cer- uh, certified through TRX, which you mentioned. Um, you're also um, with BOSU. You, s- you said you were one of the first BOSU? Yeah, it was one of the first <laughs> BOSU people. <laughs> which is um, cool. Which was pretty cool. One of the first BOSU, one of the first TRX. Um, in fact, I have a great story about um, Randy Hetrick from TRX. Sure, yeah. You're familiar with him. Is so he, he, no, I'm not. He's the guy who started TRX. Okay. And so the whole story about Randy is that he was in Desert Storm. He was like a Navy SEAL. Oh, okay. Um, and he, you have to look him up. Because yeah. Because he's like the father of TRX. Yeah. He's the father of suspension training. <laughs> um, and he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. But he started this, um, they were in Desert Storm and they were like, we need to work out. So they took the webbing off of a parachute mm-hmm. and threw it over the fence. Oh, right? okay. Totally makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. And they started this whole exercise series. Randy then got out of, of of the military and he went to business school, I think Stanford oh, or something. Okay. And he created this company, TRX. And back then it was called Fitness Anywhere. 
Okay. Which was such a great name because yeah. his whole thing was, and this was back kind of in the birth of of the internet too. He sure, was like, yeah. go throw your TRX over a tree, yeah. shoot some video, send it to us, Yeah, you know, <laughs> and fitness anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one day I was walking down the street because I, I was in San Francisco at the time and he had this little company. Mm-hmm. There were literally five people <laughs> and probably $100,000 in revenue. Sure, yeah. And now he's a bazillionaire, you know. <laughs> and there was this guy, handsome guy, with, yeah. a, with a golden retriever. Oh. Right, which I now have a golden retriever. And they were on the sidewalk and he was bouncing a ball and everything. And, I, and he was like, hey, I'm Randy. And I, I mean, he's like, this is the TRX headquarters. I'm like, oh, I have one of those. I just started using it. It's really good. And he goes, come on in. <laughs> and so he shows me around and he pulls off of the hot off the presses these three posters, the TRX posters. So I've got to show those to you. They're no downstairs way. on the wall. He's like, yeah, we just got these. This is our, you know, TRX posters. So they're downstairs. Some of the first posters they ever did. First posters they ever did. <laughs> now, if I had known he was going to be, you know, I would have yeah. said, sign them. Please sign it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put your paw print here with your right. dog or something. Right. Oh, man, that would be cool. So no, that's um, awesome. But they took off. I mean, he was a good businessman, too, Other, you know, in, in addition sure. to it being a brilliant workout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we got, I got one more unrelated question. Then we're going to get deep dive into Pilates. Um, <laughs> so you also are a certified Thai body worker. So I don't know um, I don't know exactly what Thai body work is. I have some ideas of what it is, but can you give an explanation of kind of like what that style is? Yeah. Thai body work is kind of um, a lot of stretching sure. yeah. and massage at the same time. Totally. Um, it, it comes from 3,000 years ago. It's a lot. It's like the Thai version of um, shiatsu, which is a Chinese, mm. right? And so it works on the meridians of the body. Sure. So I did a certification in New York City for cool. Thai body work. Cool. Um, funny story there. Of course, I have another funny story. <laughs> um, I used to do some stretching for the cast of Stomp. Do you, remember, you know the Broadway show Stomp? Um, no, I, I haven't heard of it. It's but, like, yeah. the, it's like a bunch of dancers who drum and drummers who dance, but it's all this oh, drumming on like, okay. um, trash can lids and trash yes, cans. It's I've, a great yeah, show. The, okay. It just closed, I think last oh, year, really? a couple years ago. But, gotcha. um, so in San Francisco, they had a, a, a sit down show in San Francisco and I used to go backstage and I would stretch them all out in between. <laughs> and one time, one of them said to me, you know you're doing Thai massage. And I was like, mm, I had no idea. Like, I would stand on them yeah. and kneel <laughs> on them. And they were like, you're doing Thai massage. And I was like, no. So I looked it up and ended up, eventually, when I got to New York, I did a, a certification in it. So it's, it's cool. but you go to Thailand yeah. and you go to the beach yeah. and you'll get like these three, like two or three little Thai women <laughs> will come at, on the beach and do like an hour and a half for 10 bucks. Wow. I've never done this. Yeah, yeah. But you But know, that's how it is there. Yeah, they stand all over you. So it's kinda <laughs> interesting. It's it's very um and you do it clothed. Yep. You know, yep. it's not like oil and whale sounds and all that. It's like <laughs> not a Swedish it style. Can be pr- it can be pretty rigorous. Totally. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I haven't done that in a long time. Sure, honestly. sure. I did it in New York <laughs> That's cool, a lot, though. but I haven't done it much. I do have a Thai massage mat in the back there. Oh, cool. So someday. <laughs> Um, all right, so into Pilates a little bit. So um, just as your posters are here on the wall, they're all about uh, Joe Pilates. Yeah. And so you mentioned this to me a little bit off air, but he was basically the founder, or he was the founder yeah, of Pilates. Yeah, he was. I mean, yeah. Joe Pilates is, um, and he's pretty revered in our world. You sure. Know? Um, it, it's it's a legacy. It's been passed down through the years, and and it's becoming less and less of a more pure. Um, you know, there's a whole sort of fight between classical and contemporary Pilates. Interesting. Okay. Um, and the classicists are like, look, we only do everything the way Joe did it. Gotcha. Um, and the machines that they use are very similar to Joe's original gotcha. designs, which are actually, they were much narrower. They were much, um, they were a little stiffer. Sure. Sure. Um, this company, Balance Body, who I love, shout out <laughs> to Balance Body, um, came up with a bit more uh, smooth and... They're very smooth when you use them, yeah. And kind of athletic version of the equipment. So, uh, But there's a lot of equipment makers. Mm. Um, but anyway, so Joe... Um, what were we talking about? Uh, Where he, he came from? Yeah, so he... <laughs> so I when I 
when I hear Pilates now, I had never actually realized that that someone, it was yeah, somebody's last name. Yeah. It's a guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it was interesting to hear that like, he was yeah. the he was the founder, and like I guess is there um, is there a backstory on like how he ended up coming Absolutely. to Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Joe, the story about Pilates, basically Joe, um, he was into fitness. He was a very a sickly child. Okay. He had like rickets or something like that, and so he kind of um, developed his own fitness regimen sure. um, as he got older. And so the story is that Joe um, was interned during the World War I okay. in a prisoner, of, uh, not a prisoner of war camp, but a um, German, uh, British national camp. Okay. So it was called the Isle of Man where all, because he was um, German, but he was living in Britain. Anyway, mm-hmm. they, so they put them in this camp. Gotcha. And it was like a prisoner of war camp, basically. They sure. couldn't leave. Yeah. Um, and so he took the springs off the beds. <laughs> This is the story. There, no there are some people saying that this is questionable now, but hey, I um, like it. Run he with took it. the springs <laughs> off the bed and he built this equipment. He was a real inventor. He sure. invented all sorts of things. In I fact, mean, yeah. over there, there's an actual patent on the wall. Is a patent oh, for Joe's yes. chair. This thing that we're okay. actually sitting on right now. Yep. Yep. Um, this chair was created. And if you Google Joe Pilates chair, yeah, um, there's a really funny video of Joe and his wife Clara. Yep. Um, and she's sitting on a chair reading a paper. And he comes over and he shoo, 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 get up. And he flips the chair over. And there's springs on the bottom of the chair. And he starts doing um, <laughs> exercises on the chair. So this was actually designed as some furniture. You know, Joe was gotcha. a real inventor. Anyway, so he created the reformer, basically, and mm. created all these exercises. He was really into um, fitness and the whole... Um, mind, body, spirit, the whole thing. Sure, sure. Um, and so at the time, in the 20s and 30s, they thought he was a kook. Yeah. You know, he had no <laughs> medical degree, so nobody listened to anything he said. So sure, Pilates sure. did not become popular until much, much later, until gotcha. um, way after Joe was dead. Really? Yeah, in fact, people say he was he was kind of depressed because nobody, his whole yeah. thing was. In fact, and so he wrote, this was the book he wrote in 19, I think it's 1938. Mm. It's called Return to Life Through Contrology. So he called his his program Contrology because huh. it was all about being able to control sure, and yeah. being able to really concentrate and focus on the physical fitness aspects. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's this is a great book if you only have you know a few minutes it's mm. a tiny little there's about 30 min, 30 pages of kind of what i call a manifesto yeah okay and it was written i think in 1938 1928 um wow and the but the like the very first line of this joe says let's see physical fitness is the first requisite of happiness Okay. That's the first line in his book. <laughs> first line of the book. First line of the book. Wow. But then here's the next line, which I love. This is great. Our interpretation of physical fitness is the attainment and maintenance of a uniformly developed body with a sound mind, fully capable of naturally, easily, and satisfactorily performing our many and varied daily tasks with spontaneous zest and pleasure. <laughs> I like that. Is that the greatest? That's, like, that's great. just the first two lines of Joe Pilates' book. Those are great so two he's, lines. So he's kind of a weirdo. But even back then <laughs> in the 30s, he was like, you know, people are hunched forward. Sure, yeah. People have really bad posture. Yep. You need to get open. You need to pay attention. You need to work out yeah, all the yeah. time, you know. Um, he wanted everybody to be doing his exercises. So he created yeah. these these um, routines. He started with this mat work yep. of with it. There are about 35 exercises. And he was like, everybody should be doing this. Yeah. And the world would be a better place. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it didn't happen until much, <laughs> much later after he died. So we're probably skipping ahead a little bit, but I know there's, there's, well, I'm not sure. I don't know. I shouldn't say I know, but I've heard there's different studios that will, some will do more reformer work and some will do more mat work. But it sounds like he was doing both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was doing both. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because he didn't have the, you know, he didn't have the, the, the access the equipment? to create gotcha. what he called the universal reformer is the first. Gotcha. Okay. The first reformer. And it looked a lot like, you, do you remember the Total Gym? Yeah, um, yeah. It's like kind of it's kind if you look at it it's kind of a reformer. Yeah, totally. Now that you've been on the reformer, you'll look at it and go, "Oh yeah, and it's got straps." Right, right. Like, like the reformer does. So, right. Um huh. Chuck yeah. Norris in the Total yeah, Gym. Yeah. Yeah. So that Very was similar. his original patent of the universal reformer. Gotcha. Okay, um and cool. then he immigrated. He immigrated to New York City in um where he met as supposedly his wife Clara on the on the boat. 
Okay. Um, he basically took off because I think the Nazis came to him and said, we want you to train our military. <laughs> and he was like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so he left and um, he ended up in New York City where he started a little Pilates studio in Bendel's. Um, Bendel's was like Macy's okay. Um, okay. department store. Yeah, and so that's where all the rich people, the rich women, found him. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was down the street from one of the major dance companies. Okay, um, uh, American Ballet Theater. Okay, Balanchine, okay. and so they um, and Balanch- Balanchine had a very strict kind of movement. Um, so a lot of the Balanchine dancers found him. Martha Graham, who was also a modern dancer, a lot of the dancers found him gotcha. when they got injured. And so that's how it became a woman's exercise, right? right? But when you think about it, Pilates was made by a man primarily for men because it was mostly men in that, in that fitness camp. In a basically war prison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So people think, oh, it's so girly. You right. know? I mean, did you think it was girly? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. It was hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, I gave that you makes some sense. hard stuff. Yeah, that was, no, it was good. It was really good. Like. Like, even like you said again we might be skipping around but there wasn't really a warm up needed because like the the movements kind of prepare you to yeah. do what the movements need, need you to do yeah. essentially so um, and can yeah. you see how this the reformer kind of resembles a, a medical bed yeah you know yeah, it, yeah. Like, even the material is like okay this feels like my massage table or my PT table yeah <laughs> you yeah. know they're a lot cushier now than they used to be when, sure. when Joe came out with them but um. yeah that's you know that's really cool um, so I, uh, some of the some of the follow up questions I had on that, and I think you probably touched upon them uh, already, but uh, some of the like principles that that um, that Joe Pilates had um, were there specific things that he was really, and I think you mentioned this already, but like, and, and even with what you read, but focusing on like being centered, focusing mm-hmm. on um, correcting imbalances, yeah, focusing balance. on being strong, yeah, and control, control, um, and the other thing that Joe's really big on is breathing. Breathing, yeah, sure. So there is what we call Pilates breathing. Yes, I call it the blow suck. Yeah, <laughs> yes, which now you can take with you forever. Yes, um, <laughs> like you, you saw it with the um, and I, I had a that written down too. The blow suck method, um, which you coined. Yes, I coined. Uh, um, is you, there are some stickers that I, I think I saw, like maybe on oh, your yeah, fridge I or have Instagram. Some downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you take some. With I will. You, I now you know what that. blow suck is. Um, I'm like, what is that? Yeah. There's, there's got to be some sort of uh, meaning behind that. But uh, but yeah. Joe called. Um, he called breathing the internal shower. Okay. Which is kind of a cool term yeah, too. You know? Yeah. So there's a lot about breathing, and breathing is is what brings you into focus and concentration and and totally. control. Uh, and it basically involves your core. Right, so. right. Yeah, like when I was doing the, um, on the reformer, there was a couple movements where I was, uh, my my pelvis was too anteriorly tilted. Mm-hmm. Um, I was holding my breath, yeah. which makes it harder. Yeah. Um, and you were like, all right, just, you know, do the blow suck method, um, blow out, I think, was and pushing down. Yeah, you blow the air and you suck your belly button in. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's there's the method right there. <laughs> yeah. You can check my Instagram too for uh, <laughs> Mind to Body Fit. At Mind to Body Fit, you can check my Instagram. There's a, a, a couple demonstrations of the blow suck. Perfect. All yeah. right. <laughs> um, and then while, while we're on it, the other sticker that I saw was the kumquat yep. sticker. Yep. Um, can you explain that technique a little bit? Because you were bringing me through and, and using that cue for me as yeah, well. Yeah. So the kumquat, actually, that comes from ballet. Okay. So in ballet, they tell you to put a like tangerine or clementine or something sure. in your armpit. So for me, that was like too big. Yeah, you know? yeah. And kumquat is a much funnier word, right? <laughs> so kumquat has to do with where you put your... So even when I say it, when I say kumquat, like people sit up, yeah. um, <laughs> it has to do with putting your shoulders and your arm bone into the right place so you have power mm-hmm. and you have control and you're, and you're free from injury, you know? Totally. We're also like flexed forward and the ape... The ape <laughs> position, I call it, you know, yeah. where the arms are like internally rotated. So yep. kumquatting puts this puts a small piece of fruit in your armpit. You open your shoulders, you slide your shoulders down, open your collarbone, right, right, and it's a little external rotation of the arm bone. And then you have to pull your ribs in, but then it, that's way too much. Yeah, there yeah. now I see your six pack. <laughs> um, it's way too much to describe in the middle of a Pilates session, right? right? Yeah. So I just yell "kumquat," and everyone in the <laughs> studio knows what to do. When when you said that, when when you explained it to me, my mind went to like 
like calling plays in the football field. Oh, like yeah. they'll say like Omaha or something yeah, like that, kumquat, yeah. and like everybody knows like it's a simple word, but what is it? What's the meaning behind yeah, it? So that's I never I like thought of that. Cue. Yeah, See? I like that. Pilates and football. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There's a lot of similarities. My brother will like that. That, <laughs> yeah. we, that we connected those two. Yeah. Um, so and and we talked about um, this already, but I don't know if you wanted to expand on it at all, or or if we already kind of hit it, that um, then that's fine. But. Um, Differences between reformer Pilates and Matt Pilates. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually, even in our studio, we fight every once in a while about <laughs> which is better, Matt or 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 equipment. Sure, or yeah. Also apparatus is sometimes the word we use for that. Um, yeah. So the Matt kind of came first. Sure. Um, and so the Matt sort of informs everything. And um, a lot of people think the Matt work is harder. Mm. And then, so all of those mat exercises are then done on all these pieces of equipment. Mm. But me, I like my toys. You know, <laughs> as you can see by sitting in my studio, I have a lot of toys. Yes. Um, and I've been doing this a really long time, so props are. You know, I just like I yeah. just like using toys to to make things more interesting. So, totally. Um, but so for me, putting the mat work on the equipment is much more interesting. Totally. Um, yeah. So. But we, we actually right now don't have any mat classes on our schedule, but we're going to put some on because I have these teacher trainers who nice. need to. So, and the, and the first the first exercise set that they learn is the mat exercises. Sure. So it really sure. is the basis of. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people will tell you the mat is harder. I think the reform is harder. <laughs> I guess it depends how you use it, right? <laughs> it depends, right? <laughs> it, yeah. I mean, the stuff you put me through today was pretty hard, yeah. so <laughs> I believe it. Um, no, that's a good answer. I like that. Um, and then um, another uh, question, which we touched upon already, but uh, yeah, if you had any other explanation for it, was a uh, difference between classical Pilates and contemporary. Contemporary, yeah. yeah. So, so the classicists are really like, um, you know, I talked a lot about the legacy and the and the um, behind Joe. Um, a lot of the classicists, and I probably don't do them justice, but they <laughs> they they want Pilates to remain. Mm. Um, kind of, it should, it should be, we should teach it the way Joe intended it, Yes, which has definitely a place and sure. that is important. Sure. Um, but the thing about Joe is he was an inventor and he was a genius. Right. Right. So he, if he was around, he would have modified this stuff. It like, would continue to evolve. It would, you know, yeah. if Joe had an MRI machine yeah. and was able to see what actually happens to the spine, which he knew, mm. he, he knew all this stuff just intuitively yes. about how the body works. Yeah. Um, but if he now had all this proof that we have, um, like for example, in in the classical, um, I'll say this, but some yeah. people will fight me. Okay, um, <laughs> they work in an anti- they work in a posterior tilt, so they mm-hmm. work in in where the the back is down flat on the mat. Yes, yeah. Um, I don't work that way because what I want to do is inform the spine on how to sit in a neutral position. Sure, yeah. And it's not, in fact, neutral to have your lumbar spine flexed down on the, you know, on the right. mat when you lie down. So, um, so just little fights like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's gotten, there were, there were periods of time when, um, when Pilates, we got into big fights, but you know, now <laughs> we're all living to, we're all living together. Nice. You know, so That's contemporary good. stuff is much more creative. Mm. Um, I will say there are some people who go onto Instagram and do some really crazy stuff oh, and yeah. they call it Pilates, you know, yeah. where you're like rolling a ball, you know, hanging <laughs> from the ceiling and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, if you, uh, well, what I always say is if you use the principles of Joe, yeah. you know, center control, balance, concentration, then you can, you know, you can say you're using the principles of Pilates. Totally. Um, and, and that's the, that's where the classical holds tight. Cool. You cool. Know? I like that. I feel um, like that's true in like every aspect of fitness, every profession, like there's different styles of it and the people will fight about it. But at the end of the day, it's like, exactly. I yeah. Mean, a bicep curl is a bicep curl, yeah. you know yeah. I mean? Like a squat is a squat. Right. Right. You know? And, and you know this cause you're a, ther- a physical therapist. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I know this because I'm an anatomy junkie. That the, you know, the the muscles that move the bone are exactly the same. Right. You know. Right. Whether you're doing them upside down or you know yeah. on a reformer, or the body a, doesn't know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so this is this is good. Uh, good transition into. So, uh, I guess when I was doing these exercises today. Uh, one thing that was interesting to me was the spring-loaded tension, mm. um, and the well, that that was one big thing. The other big thing was um, the idea of the more springs is actually a lot of times the easier. 
because it's giving you it's more giving you more help, yeah. Versus versus less less springs or less resistance is actually more difficult. Yeah, for exactly. the exercises. So um, that's one thing where I don't really see in any other. I think that's pretty unique. Yeah. To apply. I don't really yeah. see that in most other types of exercises. If you want it to be harder, you put more weight on. Right. Um, so Although it's, it's, like, yeah. it's kind of like assisted dips, assisted sure. pull-ups, you yeah. know, yeah. that concept. That as you drop the weight, they get harder. Yeah. It's the same kind of concept with Pilates, yeah. Totally. But you're right about the spring. The spring has this real, it's, it's even different than bands. Yeah, um, yeah. The spring has a real quality of expand and contract. And if you, if a lot of times I'll talk about as you pull a spring apart, it's like your inhale. Yeah. You know, and as you exhale your own, as you bring the spring back together, it's like you're, you're blowing the air out of the spring. Totally. But it puts you into all this eccentric movement. Right. Which right. is super cool, which Joe, you know, I don't know that Joe called it eccentric movement, yeah. <laughs> but, um, he just figured all that out. So, yeah, no, um, that is awesome. So yeah. as far as, um, and, um, the benefits of, of Pilates, like with, with the style of movement and just the practice in general, um, what, what do you see as far as benefits for p- people doing Pilates versus other types of exercises? Yeah, that's a good question because, yeah. <laughs> um, there are people who will say, all you need is Pilates. Sure. Okay. You know, yeah. I do not yeah. <laughs> um, go into that camp. First of all, it's terrible for cardio. Sure. Um, yeah. It yeah. doesn't really do any cardio unless you're working really. I mean, you were sweating. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like a really rigorous workout unless you're more advanced. Like when you get to the mm. advanced and you're really like flowing through the exercises and you just go, go, go. Right. Um, that's that you can get some cardio going. There's also a board that you put down here at the end of the reformer where you jump. It's called okay. the jump board. Yeah. And so you can actually be, you're on your back, but you're jumping. That oh, gets your heart okay. rate up quite a bit. Totally. So, um, those, that's pretty fun. We used to have like a whole hour of jump board <laughs> class. Um but so uh, for me, it's really great in combination with other things. Sure. I love Pilates and weightlifting together. The combination. Because what Pilates does is really put you into a really good posture, safe posture. Mm. Um, it finds imbalances. Like even when you lay down on the table, I could see you had a little something in your left shoulder. Yeah. Yep. You know? Immediately. Yeah. Like within 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And that's like just by lying there. It's yeah. Like, it's like I'm, I'm, you know, I do have an eagle eye. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Pilates will will really pull that stuff out. Sure. Um, so it's a lot about when you when you put all your stuff into an efficient place, you can lift heavier. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And so I that's why I, I do find that when I do some like I'll do a Pilates session or a couple of Pilates sessions, and then I'll go to the weight room and be like, Yeah, man, I'm killing it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I gotta do Pilates more often. Right. I right. say that all the time. So they go they help each other. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. So they're really great with other things. Um, we have people, uh, I will say, we don't have a lot of people that do yoga. Usually it's mm. yoga or Pilates. Sure. Okay. Um, because, you know, the yoga people like to get more zen and the Pilates people like all the toys and like the <laughs> equipment and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, um, But it's got some similar benefits to yoga. Sure. It definitely yeah. stretches. It definitely straighten, strengthens. Yeah. Um, when yeah. I get people who come in and they say, oh, I just want to stretch. Yeah. I'm like, well, well all right, but we're going to do Pilates. <laughs> and, you know, you're going to get this combination of strength and tone and stretch right um, right cool. you know like that split exercise yeah that I gave you that was tough you know yeah there's definitely strengthening going on there yeah yeah <laughs> Stre- a lot of stretching but a lot of strengthening so, too that's a cool combination <laughs> so it's really good with other things you only have to do it i mean it's the other thing about pilates is it's very expensive Sure. Because sure. we go through a lot of training and we have a lot of equipment and yep. liability insurance. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's um, it's kind of expensive to do, but you can't. So you can't really do it every day. Right. A lot of people. Um, right. You know, you could do the mat work every day. Sure. Sure. And Joe's whole thing was like, there's videos of Joe where he would um, video their film. Yeah. Know, back yeah, then. yeah. He took him in the. I don't know when film was invented, but it was back then. <laughs> Um, where he gets out of, he wakes up and he and he um, sent, put, pushes the covers off and he starts doing his exercises. <laughs> he starts doing his series of five, which is this series of five exercises. Yeah. Um, the ab series, it's called. Okay. Where you're, you just do this um, leg work and ab work the whole time for several minutes. Gotcha. <laughs> um, the series of five is kind of like a staple exercise. Gotcha. Okay. So. Yeah, so it can be done every day. Yeah, it can in some be done facets. every day, but um, <laughs> you know, you only need it a, a few times a week. Totally, that's yeah. cool. And once a week is great. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, it, like 
you are, I mean, I'm sure, like, you do, like, a, like smaller group classes here, too, right? Yeah, or, our yeah. biggest class is five people. So, we yeah, have so you five get, pieces of machinery. Yeah. You're getting a lot of, like, one on one supervision, almost like a yeah. pseudo personal training. Yeah. But, or yeah. small group personal training. So, yeah. you're getting a lot Probably of value. The, the, yeah. be, the beef of our, of our um, business is private and duet oh, okay. training. Yeah, we sure. do a lot of privates. And um, it also does a, a lot of rehab stuff. Totally. So we get people totally. in here with the tons of injuries, and um, it's great for post rehab. Yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, I see once you. they get cleared by you, yeah. <laughs> you could send them over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a lot of people because typically in that first after their injury rehab phase is like, okay, you can get back into lifting, but it needs to be slow and controlled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not so much like don't. Don't go jump into a CrossFit workout. Don't go jump into an Orange Theory right. and do running. Let's get some slow and controlled stuff going on. Right. So something like this right. would be perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it will inform you too. It teaches you. Yeah. Where things are supposed to be. Yeah. That's that's so. one thing I noticed too when you're teaching me is like it's a lot of it is on like okay, let's help you figure out how your figure body is where, moving. Yeah. And like where's your rib cage? Yeah. And, yeah. That's why um, it's very smart. It's very smart training. Yeah. Which is why my tagline is smart workouts that fit your life. There we go. <laughs> right. Because it's very, and what happens is there, Joe has a saying, and this is kind of famous. He says, after 10 sessions, you'll feel different. Okay. After 20 sessions, you'll look different. <laughs> after 30 sessions, you'll have a whole new body. Wow. Right. Yeah. And it's really true. So that's cool. I think I, I think I got that right. I may have had that backwards. But anyway, it's <laughs> No, that um, sounds right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um that's what happens. It's really like all of a sudden you're taller and you're sure. moving more with ease and people say, Did you get a haircut? Like, no, nah, it's just the no, kumquats. It's the kumquats, <laughs> man. I'm just flow sucking all over town. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah. No more questions. Yeah. You know how you verb. You know how you take a, a noun and make a verb out of it. I'm yes. quatting. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm flow sucking. Ver I'm verbing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, one one other piece on that actually too, which is I think this is very unique for Pilates compared to a lot of other styles of fitnesses. You guys are I'm, well. You guys, I don't know if I should, I should generalize, but you are very um, in tune with like you have the musculoskeletal charts. Yeah. You had you brought over that like skeleton with the the clay on it like. Not a lot of other aspects of fitness are like, hey, let's look at like anatomy, like what's going on like yeah. inside the body, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some teachers are really into it. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of Pilates people are really into anatomy. Yeah. But you don't need it. Sure. If sure. you know the exercise, you know the flow. But yeah. for me, this is what I told my students this weekend. Yeah. What makes a great trainer or a great um, teacher? Yeah. You know, extraordinary. Sure. Is is knowledge of that anatomy and understanding how that how that how the body moves in any situation. Right. You know, whether I'm like bending over to pick up groceries or reaching onto the shelf. Right. You know, that's where Pilates is. And jo that was Joe's plan. Joe's yeah. plan was that, you know, your everyday life, you know. Pilates is the requisite of happiness. <laughs> yeah. And a little zest. What was it? A little zest and something? Zest. Yeah, I love that word, zest. That's, I'm going to start using that word That's more a often. trending word right now, actually. Is it really? Yeah, zest. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so zest Joe is, and pleasure. Joe was ahead of the time. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're, we're getting towards the top of the hour here, so I want to be respectful of your time, too. But I have a couple last questions that I um, that I wanted to ask you. Or um, uh, So... One, I think I think we mentioned this already a little bit, but um, if fill in the gaps, if there's anything else, how is mine um, mine's body fitness different than other other studios in general? What, like, what makes um, you guys unique? Yeah, well, we have really good teachers. Yeah, <laughs> um, and the particularly me and some of my staff are really into this multiple modality thing. Sure. Yep. So uh, you know, we've got personal training, we've got the power plate. Yep. Um, we we think. <laughs> in terms of movement more than just, you know, just Pilates or just weightlifting. Totally. Um, cool. And so when I when I hire people, that's what I'm looking for is that kind of thing. Nice. Um, and we're, f you know, we're fun. <laughs> you We've are, got a beautiful you are space. This, yeah. Yeah. We also do virtual, um, you know, of course, like everybody, when, when COVID hit, we just pivoted immediately. Yep. We sent out a kit to all of our, um, to all of our clients with... Cool. With some bands in it and some little squishy balls and stuff, <laughs> and um, and we started doing the mat work. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know, and everybody was like, wow. <laughs> People couldn't believe how they were like, well, I'm so strong all of a sudden. Like, just within a couple of weeks, people were like, wow, this mat work is really great. Yeah. Um, so, we, uh, so I still have about 30% of my business nice. virtually. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mix in now, like, I, I do some squats before I do my, yeah. <laughs> before I do my Pilates. But um, so we still have a lot of virtual stuff going as well. Very cool. Awesome. Um, so a couple myths. So any any myths you want to dispel as far as um, anything about Pilates that you often hear that you have to say, no, 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 that's not right. That's that's not correct. Yeah, like we yeah the two we <laughs> talked about Pilates. Pilates is like yoga. Yeah. No, okay. not really. Yeah. Um, the big thing about the big difference between Pilates and yoga is that yoga, yoga you go into a position and you stay and you breathe. Yeah. You know, and you and you and it's great. I like yoga. I don't, I don't, it's probably the one thing I don't have a certification in, <laughs> but that and running, I don't do, I don't run at all, but, um, sure. but so Pilates and yoga in Pilates, you're working about y- your moving through. It's yeah. more about, you don't really, you don't really hold much. You're, you're working dynamically more through that, sure. through that movement. Gotcha. Um, but the breathing, the breathing's actually yeah. a little bit different in Pilates. Okay. Um, in Pilates, you breathe more into your back because yeah. you know, that's where your lungs are. Sure. Um, and yoga, guys think they breathe a little more into the like diaphragm in the front, but it's all the same. Breathing is breathing. You sure, know? sure. Yeah. Um, so that and the whole um, Pilates is for girls. Yeah. So yeah. Not true. And now, now we're luckily we're getting you know like some of the um, baseball teams. Yeah. Football teams have Pilates studios in their. Oh, cool. In their, you know, in their rooms. So. Yeah. Um, makes sense. So we're getting some, in fact, they made, uh, what they call the stretch or the athletic reformer. They, okay. they had to add like another six inches on the end of it because all these <laughs> like tall, tall like athletes, athletes, yeah. athletes were getting on it and they were like, ah, all squished up. So, right. Um, like, all right, let's, we'll extend it a little more. <laughs> so it's really for everybody. Cool. And you know, it's cool. especially good for men. Sure. Yeah. Because it was created by man and because men are tight, let's face it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, cool. It's especially good for men. Cool. Um, and then one simple thing: what is what is uh, so last last uh, I guess nuts and bolts question here? <laughs> What's something simple that uh, more people should be doing? I'm gonna say breathing. Nice. I like yeah, it. <laughs> I'm gonna say breathing. Yeah. And blow sucking, of course, because yeah, you can suck. blow suck anywhere. That's true. You know, sit in your car, get to a uh, stop sign, and three blow sucks, and you've engaged your core, <laughs> and you're good to go. Right. <laughs> Love it. Um, cool. All right. So we'll get to wrap up here. So anything, so three, three final questions. So anything in store for the future that you're excited about? Anything you, else you want to plug or, or talk about? Instagram accounts, website, events coming up, um, specials. And then last question, favorite quote. And the way I phrase this I think is pretty cool. It's, I took it from Tim Ferriss. But if, if, if you could put one quote mantra saying on a billboard in Providence. So you get the, the one next to the big blue bug. Oh the yeah! Rob oh, billboard. that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. You, that's you, you got it for the day. You can say whatever you want on it. Typically, something like to your your. Oh, community. that changes my answer then. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. But let's start off with um anything in store for the future. Yeah. Well, excited? let me. You know, I'll plug the teacher training. Um, yeah. So anybody who's interested in getting certified, um, we have a teacher training. It does take a long time to get certified in Pilates. It takes a year. Cool. Yeah. Um. So it's a pretty, pretty, uh, and you have to do a lot of practice. Yeah. Um, and apprenticing kind of stuff. So, yep. but it's fun. So I'm really excited about that and, and would love to have some people in for that. Um, we're, you know, we're constantly putting new stuff on the schedule. Um, in fact, we're going to start a second Saturday workshop. Um, I had a new, I have a new staff person, Amanda, who's, hi, shout out to Amanda Cole. Mm-hmm. Um, Amanda is, uh, ran a mobility series, mobility movement series. Okay. That was kind of a big hit. So we spent a whole hour on just mobility of the hip. Cool. And then an hour on just mobility of the shoulder and then one on the spine. Yep. So we're going to run those again on our second nice. Saturday workshop. So, nice. And then we're just going to leave that slot open. It's going to be 1030 on the second Saturday Yeah. for anything. So like I happen to have kind of a specialty in hypermobility. Yeah. And we have a lot of clients with um, EDS, Ehlers-Danlos, and, y- yep. and hypermobile clients because we get a lot of dancers in Pilates. Sure, sure. Um, so we might run some stuff on that. Cool. Um, osteoporosis because yeah. Pilates is really good for osteo because you can get – you can stay in neutral spine and get – Good strength you know, training. Get good strength training and get good resistance yeah. on your bones. 
Um, cool. So I'm kind of excited about that. That yeah. should be fun. So if you, you know, check our website, check our socials. Cool. Um, and we'll we'll keep posting on those. Nice. Um, and then... Uh, are you favorite ready quote. for I'm my ready, favorite I'm quote? I'm ready for it. Yeah. Right, I've had this a long time, and I actually got this. I got. I, I came up with this back in the day when I was in Hawaii, I think. Okay. Um, one of my favorite quotes, I say this all the time, is lift your feet, drop your ass, and float down the river. <laughs> That's good. Right? Because um, when you go kayak, like whitewater rafting, kayaking, yeah. and you fall in, yeah. and this happened to me, Sure. the first thing you want to do is like dig your feet in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you want to like resist and... Man, and you, what you have to do is lift your feet, <laughs> drop your ass down, and yeah. you'll float out of trouble. Sure, yeah. Right? And I've always thought that is just a great way to live life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Don't so, fight it. <laughs> the other way I want to live my life is live like my dog. Yeah. And you they got a golden retriever, too. In the too. <laughs> moment, they live like, it's just, where's the next thing? Where's the next moment of pleasure? And Totally. You know, I just always look at my dog and go, first I look at my dog and go, wow, I wish I could walk on four legs. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. one thing I look at. And I always say, oh man, I wish I could just live for the moment like that. Totally. I'm not good at that at totally. all. But Dogs are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for being on. We'll, we'll uh, wrap up with that. Yeah. Very it's been good. super fun. Thanks for <laughs> trying Pilates. Yeah. No, that was a blast. And I was definitely sweating. And uh, no, it was mu- it was much needed to get me loosened up. Yeah, so it was great. Good. So hopefully cool. you'll come back. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, Roadie Strength, we are signing off. Cool. Awesome. Nice job. Crushed it.